Mornings. You're listening to us in Prince George, 91.5 FM, where an examination of BC's inland temperate rainforest ecosystem has revealed bad news. The result shows that the ecosystem of the rainforest is on the verge of collapse. The study was conducted by a team of international scientists, and it's just been published in the journal Land. With us this morning, two of those involved in the study, Dominic De La Sala, chief scientist of the California-based Wild Heritage, and UNBC botanist Darwin Coxon. Dominic De La Sala, good morning to you. Morning. And Darwin Coxon, good morning as well. Uh, good morning, Carolina. Uh, I'd like to start, uh, Dominic, with uh, a question around the inland temperate rainforest and its size. Just how far does this rainforest stretch into North America? Well, first of all, uh, Canadians are very blessed with having one of only two other regions in the world that can boast inland temperate rainforest. So this is a very unique part of the Canadian natural inheritance And it does cross the 49th parallel into extreme northwestern Idaho portions of Montana where it's wet enough, like Glacier National Park, to extend over to the U.S. side. But the Canadians have the bulk of this amazing, rare ecosystem. And Darwin, I'd like to bring you into the conversation. Uh, as you, as uh, Dominic mentioned, the bulk of this rainforest is right here in northern B.C. What makes it so unique and special? Well, one of the, the really important attributes is that as these storm systems come off the Pacific, you know, they first of all dump a lot of rain on the coastal mountains and you have a, a temperate rainforest there. But as they cross the interior mountain ranges, you know, as they intercept the mountains, uh, there's a much higher zone of rainfall, and particularly a sort of deep winter snow that then melts through the spring and recharges soil. So it's this unique fact of having a an inland mountain range that is intercepting these specific storm systems. And when we think about just how hot and dry it's been across most of the the province this summer, it it brings into um, highlight, I think, about uh, how this rainforest is at risk. What are some of the factors, Dominic, that's putting this rainforest at risk? Yeah, so what we did is we looked at uh, using Canadian databases uh, published by the Canadian government, the B.C. government in particular, and remote sensing from satellite imagery. We have been able to track the uh, level of human disturbances in the bioregion for the past 50 years. And what we have seen is, as you can imagine, the majority of those disturbances have come from clear-cut logging, and we've been able to track that on a decade-by-decade basis. And from the 1970s to through the 2000s, we've seen a doubling in the rate of clear-cut logging in that rainforest, which has now put it at a trajectory of imminent collapse within a decade or so. That system, if it continues at this pace and scale of logging, can lose all the core interior habitat that's really critically important for species like lichens that are the food web, the base of the food web for endangered caribou. And Darwin really is the expert on lichens, so he can drill down even further into why we need those interior conditions and why they are so close to ecosystem collapse. Yeah, I'd like to to get a better understanding of that idea of imminent collapse. Uh, Darwin, what does that look like specifically? We don't have to look far to see examples of that. Uh, when we had a caribou herd on George Mountain, east of town, and uh, several years in Prince George, there was concern, and that caribou were down to 15, and then 7, and then 4, and then they disappeared. And one by one, we're, we're seeing that in caribou herds throughout the region. Caribou are sort of the iconic animal, but if, if we look at you know, the cryptic paw lichen, one of the lichens that uh, I work with that needs those deep shaded old growth forest environment, its status was just uplisted by the, the federal government to, to be threatened. We know that it's highly vulnerable to edges and forests. So one by one, we're just seeing organisms in decline or, or going into extinction as our landscapes become more and more fragmented. This study also compares BC's rainforest to other ecosystems around the world. Dominic, how unique 
is this particular rainforest? It's incredibly unique, and this is something that Canadians should be very proud of their natural inheritance, assuming we can hang on to it. And it's of global significance. You'd be hard-pressed to find anywhere in the world with as many lichen species, particularly new species that have yet to be cataloged by scientists, that the more we look at these rainforests, the more we discover about their importance. For instance, much of my work up until about 10 years ago was focused on biodiversity, just cataloging rare species and rainforests around the world. Now we're learning these same rainforests that have exceptional biodiversity are really helping to regulate the global climate. And when you go into these old growth forests and you're walking among these 1500 year old giant antique cedars, those are big sticks of accumulated atmospheric carbon. They are like sponges of carbon soaking up our CO2 emissions and hanging onto it in the forest. So if we want to have a stable climate going forward, we need those forests to continue doing what they do best, which is keeping the planet cool. And Dominic, what would you like to see happen to uh, protect this ancient rainforest? Well, we see this happening all over the planet right now. These ancient forests that have been around for millennia are so critically important for all the benefits that we derive from them. And the Canadian uh, rainforest is also in that category of just so unique and so important that they need to be saved. And I think uh, what we would like to see all governments do is work with First Nations in getting more of these places off the logging, chopping block, primary forests. For instance, in uh, the province in B.C., the latest studies on those show that you've only got about 23% of your forest left in primary unlogged condition. Of that 23%, only about 3% are the biggest trees. Much of that got protected in the Great Bear Rainforest Agreement, but there are big chunks, big holes in the province that didn't get swept up into conservation. And what we're saying at places like the Inland Rainforest, Clackwood Sound, and Vancouver Island, where they're still logging big trees, and in the Inland Rainforest, where they're still logging huge cedars and other rainforest trees, we've got to take those off the chopping block. And the Canadian government, just like all other governments of the world, are supposed to be complying with the Paris Climate Agreement, which includes protecting forests because of their climate benefits. Well, I thank you very much to both of you for joining me for this discussion this morning.